years of Power Sheets planning in my hands. It's the four past four years of my life right here and it's ending. It ends today. Hello friends, welcome to day eight of Vlogmas. This is a little bit more of a high production video, except not really less vloggy, more just straight to the point. But I'm doing my 2023 planner lineup and why I quit power sheets because I've been using, faithfully using power sheets for the last four years and I'm not doing power sheets anymore. I did not order it. I already knew many months ago that I was quitting power sheets and I needed something different. So in this video, I'm gonna be sharing the reasons why I started using power sheets and how they've worked for me over the past four years and why I'm quitting, why I'm doing something else. And also showing you what I'll be using in 2023 for my goal setting, but also my just monthly and daily plannings. So there's gonna be three planners that I use throughout the course of next year or try to use. So if you're excited for a long, chatty, planner discussion, you're in the right place. Grab a beverage, a comfy seat, and let's dive in. All right, friends, here's my official planner lineup for 2023 out here for consumption. And I'm gonna go through each of these one by one. We're gonna start with my Artist of Life workbook by Lavender. So I followed Lavender. I'll link her channel down below. I'm sure you've heard of her if you are on my channel, but she's like a, productivity and wellness, manifestation, mindfulness kind of channel where she has tips to basically live your best life. And she came out with a goal setting workbook that is essentially what this is, um, that she calls the Artist of Life workbook. And I've always eyed it and wanted it for the past few years, but stuck with my power sheets. So we're doing something new for 2023. I decided to pick up the Artist of Life workbook, and I got it in the cream color. I really liked the other color. I forget what it's called, but it was like a, a dark mauve, like pinkish color. And I was told, <laughs> I could not decide. I know it's going to get dirty. That was my main concern was with getting a light colored book was how dirty it was gonna get. But if you see my other option, like, <laughs> so disregarding that, but that was my color choice. And it feels very soft, very luxurious covers really nice. I also wanted to get planners this year that they didn't have any rings. So being a <laughs> diehard Power Sheets fan for the past few years, I had to get used to the rings and I don't mind the rings, but I was just really sick of them probably <laughs> like last year because when you get towards the end of the book, they just get messed up and it was annoying to like flip. And here is my current Power Sheets for 2022. So you can see our ring situation. And since we're at the back of the book, it's just, I don't know, like this, this, <laughs> this struggle annoys the heck out of me. Here are all my power sheets from the past four years. All right, I just changed the, <laughs> the white balance setting on my camera because it was getting super yellowy, yellow, yellowy, yellowy, bear with me. So like this is the, this is my whole past four years of my life, guys. And it's also interesting to see the changes of power sheets. Now power sheets have been around for, I don't know, 15, possibly 20 years, somewhere in that range. So they've been around for a while and I only caught on to them in 2019. So if we go back <laughs> in time, this was my very first power sheets, 2019. And it looks so different. It was a soft cover. It didn't have the like, I don't know, wire rings. These are plastic versus they just switched to hardcover starting in 2020 and have been going hardcover since then. The other thing for me was the size. Power sheets are large. Of course, I don't know the measurements right now, but I'll pop them here. As you can tell, the Artist of Life book is significantly smaller in comparison. So portability is definitely a priority of mine since I have a nine to five job, I commute, I like taking my planners and books with me. For the past four years, it hasn't really mattered much to me what size my goal planner is, obviously, but I wanted, again, something smaller because I don't know. I just need a change, guys. That's the main kind of takeaway for this big shift in my planners is that I just need to switch it up and try something new. I feel like I'm just kind of been going through the motions and I want to have new questions, new prompts, new things to work through because the Power Sheets goal, goal setting system is great. I'm definitely gonna integrate 
what I've used and learned from it into moving forward, but I just needed a change. So that's also why I decided to go with the Artist of Life workbook, just because it's different, it's smaller, <laughs> it's going to have a different kind of prep work system. The prep work system is going to be definitely quicker and not as intense because power sheets are definitely a known for their kind of, I don't like to use the word intense, but intense for me just means like longer and I usually just take like a week to do all of the prep work because I want to do it intentionally and not speed through it all and there's just a lot of questions and, and things you have to go through. So let's kind of dive into our Artist of Life workbook, but I need a sip of coffee before we do that. All right, coffee's been hacked. So I will say I've, I've looked through the book I kind of perused it to get an idea of what's in it so I can have something to talk about and have thoughts on it. But I will say, one of my qualms is that, I don't know, the inside feels cheaper than I expected it to be. Like, the outside feels like this is a very expensive kind of planner, and it is. It was $38, I think, plus shipping. So it's definitely like not something you would just go to the dollar store or Target and just taking that into consideration. I feel, I mean, the paper, I'm not sure what size or how thick the paper is. If I do know, I will put details there. But I think between the binding and like the paper and how it is bound, I'm not impressed. And as you'll see, as we like move through, like this, I guess it's the center and there are these two ribbons here, which is nice. It does lay flat here, but I think when you start, I guess it will lay flat. Because I want things that lay flat. That is definitely something I want for 2023. But like when you get towards the back, it just feels cheap. Cheap construction. And of course my battery's dying. BRB. All right, let's hope this battery stays, this other battery stays charged. So this gives you the overview of the table of contents at least. We have a little welcome page. I haven't really read through all of this. I'm gonna like, again, read through all of this when I actually do my planning, cause I like, it's like an event for me. It's an experience. I like to have everything cozy. I like to go out and like to a coffee shop and, and just take my time through it. So I'm really excited to do that. But we have like how to use this workbook and quotes that are always fun and motivating. And then we have kind of our review section for the previous year. We all love a good review. Okay, more reflection pages. So now we're moving into pages for 2023. So this is essentially the prep work. We start with like our theme and our questions, how do I want to feel and all of that. And these, I'm excited to go through these prompts because the thing I was starting to really hate about power sheets and that's just mostly because I've been using it for so many years is that the formatting, at least in the, the planning sections of each month, like, here's an example. I began to hate this page, the prepare well page, because I didn't really like the prompts here. I'm sick of this, like, grid layout, and I wanted to do more, like, journaling type of prompts. So I would, I would just journal in my actual, like, a separate journal and come up with my own prompts. So I feel like that I definitely grew out of with the power sheets, and I still enjoyed filling out this page. But like after a while, I just felt like I had to force myself to fill up the pages. And then with all this space, I feel like I'm not doing enough. Like I should have more in here. You know, just a lot of that perfectionism, self <laughs> negative talk coming through. And that's no fault on power sheets. I think it's good to have a lot of extra space, especially if you're going with this size. So, okay, continuing our prep work. Where were we? I'm not much of a vision border, but I want to try. <laughs> I want to try? I always want to try. And then we have this current me versus future me exercise, which you can draw, you can use photos, you can, you know, write things out. So I'm excited to get creative on these two pages. So I guess the next few pages of this prep work are kind of like different categories. So we have self love and we just do like a wellness check in. And I, I'm a sucker for these like kind of prompts and exercises and power sheets has very similar like prep work but again I need to change I need to switch it up so I'm excited to just do a whole new kind of set of exercises in this workbook but then we have things to work on our negative self-talk and self-beliefs prioritizing self-care habits I really like that there's pages dedicated to designing and committing 
to your habits because I definitely want to establish or reestablish old habits into my lifestyle and routine into the new year. All right, now we move into the actual goal setting pages. These are all the different areas that we have in the Lavender uh, Artist of Life workbook of different goals. So she breaks it down into different categories. Um, and I think we just go through each of those categories. But at first we kind of have like a dream life grid where we can just brain dump things. Power Sheets has a very similar uh, approach to that. So like the first page on the very first page in the power sheets at all is just a like brain dump section which i always liked this because i could just get every idea in my head out into paper and these were just like goal ideas things i wanted to do feelings things i'm passionate about and want to incorporate more into the year so i think i'm probably gonna be using that kind of system in these two pages so you can kind of just map out your dream and then draft out some goals. So the other good thing about power sheets is that it really allows you to kind of draft out your goals. Like you go through steps. You're not just throwing a piece of paper and you're like, all right, you need to be perfect with your goals. It gives you a lot of exercises to move through those, break them down and all of that. So I don't think that's here, at least, yeah. Or at least I will use this as a place to draft my goals or maybe I will use a separate sheet of paper or a journal or something. Um, you could also do a mind map here. I like mind mapping. So there's options. I think it comes down to having guideposts within the workbook, but also telling yourself you can use it differently than the way it's presented or just finding hacks within a system that works for you within the pages you're given. So here are all our different kinds of goal areas. So we have career goals, personal growth goals. So like what we want to learn, what we want to read. We have money goals, home goals. Oh, I rarely set home goals. So I think this will be good for me, especially since I just moved. Creative goals, which I definitely have creative goals. I want to work on spiritual goals, bucket list, 100 things that I want to do in the new year. This doesn't even have to be like things you need to go out and like travel and, and they can just be little things that you want to do, like make a cup of tea, you know, take a bath, read a book, <laughs> like very simple things. We don't have to be super complicated. And then my ideal world. That's really sweet, especially in these trying times that we're currently living in. This will be meaningful to work through. If you're new to goal setting, you want a system, you need something to help you kind of, you just need major guidance. Power Sheets is definitely a good option because it takes you through that whole system within the prep work. And yes, it's long, but it's definitely worth it if you're you know, new to goal setting or you just want to learn and adapt a new system into your routine. I'm not going to go into too much depth right now about the whole process. I will link like my playlist for my past two years of power sheet planning videos. So there's a whole playlist that you can binge and look through my like yearly goal setting and then my monthly ones. Definitely check that out if you're interested in power sheets or just the system, because I'm definitely going to be migrating the system I've learned from power sheets into these goal setting exercises over here because I just can't let it go because it really is great. But again, I just need to switch it up. And then looks like we have lessons for the journey. So kind of like pages to help you stay committed and accountable, which is always important. We go through pages on our fears. And I think these are really good for me as well to kind of go through these new prompts to work through things that are blocking me from achieving my goals, comparison to inspiration, eliminating excuses. And then I think that is truly the end of the prep work pages. So we have our little congrats page, some resources and like links and stuff. Okay, this breaks down the goal book. So we're in the goal book section. So it looks like these pages are all like prep work and this is the actual monthly, quarterly and monthly section. So if we turn the page, we have a full like year at a glance section to kind of use however you see fit. And then we go into our quarter breakdown. So this is the quarterly kind of prep work. And I do like quarterly planning. I think it's a good way to kind of set intentions more so than like concrete specific plans or just to like map out when I want to work on my goals and, and things like that. And Power Sheets does do that as well with a 
quarterly like refresh refresh pages. So this is kind of the first refresh they have for like quarterly planning. So we have for Lavender theme, like a space to put like the theme we're trying to work on and goals and projects. I don't know, this doesn't seem like enough space for me. Again, I'm probably gonna have to use that extra kind of journal. So this is what I get, a consequence for having a smaller book, is there's obviously gonna be less writing space. So that'll be interesting for me. <laughs> then we have like the three months ahead to kind of map out things, the self-reflection wheel. And then we move into our monthly breakdown. So we have our like goal section, mini goals, and then a weekly breakdown, which I'm excited to use the weekly breakdown. At first I didn't really think I would use it because I feel like I don't want to like micromanage and like go into that detail with planning my goals. Power Sheets does allow you to do mini goals, but more so in the prep work section. So here's an example of goal planning pages. And this is just for one goal. You get this whole section over here and then you are able to break your goal down with all this extra space. And that, I really like that. That allowed you to really get into the details of how you're actually going to achieve your goals. It's one thing to just write down, oh, I want to achieve 5,000 subscribers this year. And then just kind of sit it and for, <laughs> set it and forget it. But this allows you to break it down, your why, your purpose, and all the different kind of action steps that you're going to be doing. So I really like that about Power Sheets, and I'm going to be Again, migrating that system into Lavender, and if I don't have enough room to do that in this workbook, I'll do it in another like planner. But maybe I could do my breakdown into this like weekly breakdown. So it's like week one, I'm gonna do these action steps. Week two, these action steps. And then we have a little habit tracker. I don't know if I'm gonna be using this, a daily tracker. I'm not much of a tracker person, but I'm open to it. Gratitude journal, so this is good. Come back to this page throughout the month to jot down. Gratitude. So that'll be good to kind of do a check-in, to hold myself accountable, to look at my goals, and then maybe write some things out throughout the month in there. And then we have a review page. So this is once the month is over, we can come back and see how it went, what we accomplished, what didn't go well, and just like move through the action or lack of action we took and really kind of pinpoint how, why, who, what, where everything kind of happened and how we can change things moving into the next month. And then it just goes through the months from, I don't think there's anything different between January and December. It's all the same. So at the end of the book, here's our like last monthly page for next year. Here's our year end review. So we celebrate our wins, goals, how we've grown, more reflection pages. So I guess that is the entire reflection page, which I feel like it doesn't need to be drawn out. Quick and dirty. This is good enough. And then we get a little thank you. In the back of the book, there's some extra lined pages and then there's some dotted pages. So Eileen gives us kind of examples of what we can use these pages for. And there's also journaling props, which I really like that. I think that'll be good for me to reference every month, every quarter. First main planner that I'll be using is the Hobonichi Techo uh, Kazen in the English edition for 2023. I am completely new to Hobonichi and did tons of research and never would have thought this was going to be my planner. Even till a couple of weeks ago, I was not sure what planner I was going to be using and after watching a bunch of like videos and kind of like asking myself what I want to focus on in terms of like my planner <laughs> priorities and just my like life in general, I decided to get the Hobonichi Techo Cousin. And I also have this weekly pocket planner, which is a dupe for the Hobonichi Weeks planner. Let's talk about the Hobonichi Techo. Main reason I decided to get the Hobonichi Techo is because I want to do more, I want a more daily like moment in my planner. So the reason I, I'm getting the Hobonichi in a nutshell is because I want more space to write out my tasks and my schedule, but I also want a place to journal or write memories down from that day. And I also want to try and get into like doodling in here and putting like more like scrapbooking type things of like putting pictures and stickers in here and just really make it my own. Like from all the videos I was watching, it really inspired me 
to really use this as a like daily memory keeping place because I just miss that aspect of my, my life and I want a like physical place so I can look back at this journal years down the road and not only see how productive I was or not productive I was, but I want to also see like memories. And I think it's also a good place to like scrapbook tickets or business cards or just like little mementos I pick up from trips or events and things that just end up in a binder or a folder or like I throw it out because I don't know where to what to do with it. And I decided to get the Cousin, which is the A5 version, I believe, because it is bigger. I originally was going to get the, the original one that's apparently like half this size and I'm really glad I didn't because I can't believe how much smaller it would be because I do want a lot of space. I just like having a lot of space because I want to have enough white space to feel like I can write on it but I also want to do like the journaling and scrapbooking as well. So I think having the cousin is plenty of space and I will utilize it or at least I'll try to utilize it. So those are my reasons and let's just briefly go through, do a quick walkthrough. Year at a glance and then calendars for last year and the next coming year. And then we go into these monthly spreads. So the vertical layout is very different. I don't really like a vertical <laughs> layout like this, but I'm open. Like I said, I'm open to trying it and seeing if it works for me. So this will all be an experiment. So we have January through June and then we have July through December. And then we still have, we have 2022 for December. And then it goes into all the monthly spreads for 2023. And then it also goes into 2024. And then after that, it goes into a weekly spread. So that's the thing that the cousin has that the original doesn't have, I believe, where there are these weekly spreads. But they're at the beginning of the book, which I don't normally like that. I usually like having everything separated. So like everything January would be here and then my dailies and then February and so forth. So this will be an adjustment. I don't know if I'll end up using these or maybe I can use these more for like memory keeping, scrapbooking, doodling type pages. I like the like flexibility and the creative flexibility that you have with these journals. So I think it'll push me to kind of use these this space a little bit more creatively. So we have all the weekly spreads for the for this whole year through here. So then the actual daily pages, I don't think start until here. Yeah. So these are all the weekly pages. The other thing this book doesn't have are ribbons. So I'm going to have to get clips or something, bookmarking things. Again, I'm new to this, so we'll see. But I definitely want to have bookmarks so I can reference these other pages quickly. So after the end of the weeks, we go into this just like plain page which I might just use for brain dumping or writing out my yearly goals that I map out in the Lavender Planner. I like the idea of just having an open spread to do whatever. You can do a vision board, you can brain dump, you can write your goals out, you can do a lot of stuff here. And then we move into our first month, January. So what I'm excited about is that every month, which at the start of every new month before the actual first daily page, there's a whole monthly page right here. And I really like that because I think I'm going to be able to write my goals, intentions, journal, mind map. I can do kind of my month at a glance and then it segues into all of the daily pages. So I'm really excited to try that out. So here's the end of January. Then we move and it's February again, a whole page and then dailies. So that's just how it is for the whole year. So as we move into the end of the year, Here's the last day of 2023, and then there's a bunch of just empty, not a bunch, just a few plain pages here for notes or reflecting, and then there's fun little pages at the back. So we have a timetable, there's graph paper, there's a place to write out your favorites, another bucket list type thing. So I have that in two places, which is interesting. Maybe I could make it specific to a certain subject favorite things, some like resources that are cute, words to remember. I really like that. 
that's something different. A checkoff sheet, so like another like yearly tracker type thing. Place to write out gifts, address book area, and then just a place to put like personal information. And that's that's the end. Whee! So I'm really excited. I love how this is gonna just lay flat. That's what it's known for. I love the thin pages. I didn't think I would like thin pages. I'm just not used to it, but I like how it allows the book to have a lot of pages, but it's still thin. And I think it just makes it easier to like flip the pages, but also it like allows me to feel like I can write on this. If I have really nice paper, like with the power sheets, I always was hesitant to write on it because I just didn't want to like disrupt the pretty perfectness of it. So I like how the page quality encourages me to actually use the paper. And I think that's really it. I mean, there's quotes at the bottom. I'm really excited to just like have that available to me every day. Again, something new, something different. And I definitely want to use this on a very daily basis. So those are my main like planners. So that leaves us with this pocket planner, which like I said, is an experiment. I wanted to just try it out. I originally was just going to try this out before I even decided to get the Techo and I actually tried to order it from Amazon and it didn't arrive. It like got lost and I had to cancel it and reorder it. So that kind of threw a curve in my plans, but I will link everything down below, including this little weekly planner, which I believe, I believe it was like eight to nine dollars on Amazon, which is definitely a fraction of the price of the weeks. But I can already sense from having this planner, which is definitely lovely quality in comparison to this, like you can kind of tell it's already crappy quality. <laughs> like, I mean, you get what you pay for type of thing, but I think it's good if you're like trying to see if this formatting would work for you or if you just want a cheap option. So my thinking is that I will use this for work. Um, the layout is kind of how I use my current like planner for work, which is just a like gridded blank notebook where I just write things out. So I like having the week at a glance on the left side and then just a blank area on the other side to write out what my goals are, the, the projects I'm working on, things like that. And I don't know, maybe some weeks I'll use this in conjunction with my Hubenichi Techo. I like how it's undated so you can like save and just use, you know, however much you plan on using. There's a yearly plan like year at a glance at the beginning and then you have all your months again everything's undated i believe it has a full year's worth of pages so like 12 months and then like 52 weeks of weekly pages the one thing i don't like is how this this doesn't just lay flat because the binding and i can already sense that you get that like flat lying experience with the Hobonichi product. So that's just something to consider that I'm gonna have to like struggle to write this like right in here when I'm actually using it. And then at the back, there's just a lot of act a lot of extra pages that are, I guess considered note pages, but they have subject and like the date over here, which is kind of weird. So you could just cross that out, put some washi tape over it and just use the gridded section or the line section to do whatever kind of note taking, journaling, whatever you want with it. So I'll let you guys know how this goes. I'll definitely share my journey using this in upcoming videos, but that's everything. That's what I'm using for 2023. Oh, and I completely forgot that I did get a cover for my little Techo cousin because I know it's gonna get dirty, did my research. So I got this little cute planner cover. I'm trying to remember what it's called, Light in the Distance. So I was really excited. This is like $15 again on Amazon. I'll link everything down below. Um, and I think it will complement my color scheme that I'm cultivating. I just love these colors all together. So that I need to figure out how to get on <laughs> to here, but yay, planner. Yay. All right, friends, that concludes my 2023 planner lineup and my ode, my, my nod to power sheets. I just owe a lot of the past four years success to my power sheets. And I highly recommend them if you are, if you've never used them or if you are still using them and they're working for you, please continue using them. Um, I think 
it's good to continue using things if that's the season we're in, if it works, why try something new? If you feel like you're in a rut with planning and goal setting and you wanna mix it up, try something new and you are you have the energy and capacity to do that, definitely go for that. I think I also just need something new to learn and just get my brain <laughs> kicking in any way, which is why I also got these new planners. I think, again, I just want new prompts and things to do my prep work with the Artist of Life workbook. And then I just want a whole new daily planning setting to do, you know, my daily stuff and weekly stuff inside the Hobonichi Techo. And yeah, I'm so excited. My brain is like releasing so much serotonin right now. I love planners. <laughs> I'm excited to share them all with you guys as we, you know, move into the new year. So yeah, let me know down in the comments what your planner plans are for 2023. Are you sticking with what you're currently using? Are you doing something new? Are you not sure what to use? Let me know down below. And thank you guys again for being here and for tuning in to Vlogmas episode eight, I think is what we are at. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.